Now, we are very glad to see that the ENPO is approaching the state government for the state's support and in conformity with the state's stand for the issue. There had been no misunderstanding whatsoever ever since this case, ENPO case, was recommended by the state government in 2011, in July 2011. So it is with the state government's full approval and recommendation that this issue, ENPO issue, was taken up by the government of India. So we saw no reason why the ENPO, or for that matter the MHA, the government of India, should avoid the state and the people. The state has never been, a, been an obstruction. It has never stood in the way. Rather, it has facilitated by recommending and continuously supporting it for about 12, now 13 years. But the state was kept in the dark for more than one decade. So the question arises from the rest of the Naga people and the state as to why the state does not know the status of the discussions in between the GOI and the ENPO. And if the state does not know, then who else should know? Because every inch of ENPO, the Eastern Nagas, or Western, or Southern, belongs to the people at the state of Nagaland. So the people themselves are bona fide citizens of the state of Nagaland. What is happening to them, to their land, to the present or their future, is very much the state government's concern. So. Uh, the general public started demanding to know what is happening. A new state is to be born, or will it be a union territory, or some kind of another arrangement. So with that growing pressure, the government had to go to Delhi, and straight away we went to the government of India, and we demanded to know what was, what was happening what's going on and why it is not being told to us. Then only we came to learn a lot of things, which was good. And uh, we insisted that it should henceforth not be bilateral, but trilateral. And the state should become a party in the top. The state should be consulted also. And then if we arrive at certain decisions, it should be with the full knowledge and consent of the state. That was how I prayed to us. So, the other day, you have, uh, you have been asking me repeatedly. The other day, I think in a long time, or for the first time maybe, I've just come into the dome. The ENPO has come to the chief minister. <coughs> to seek for his uh, blessings and his continued support and also to deliberate on what would be the possible final outcome of this dialogue being held between <coughs> them. So this, uh, the state as such is still not prepared with an answer immediately as to what it should be. But uh, I think uh, Chief Minister, being a very seasoned politician, he understood the requirements of our people in the Eastern sector, which after he expressed, we all also generally agree. It is not, you don't have any political problem. It is not political whatsoever. We are very much part and parcel of this state as people together. And 
the problems we would identify are more economic in nature. So in certain areas like education, you lack the eastern side in infrastructure development also certain things lack. In the medical sector also and health you lack. And in the states overall per capita income also you lack. But like that, those things have to be addressed over and above the reservations that you have. So if those are addressed, then the other you don't have any other problem. We'll have to address those grievances because there is need to give a more concentrated focus in those areas. So the demands put forwards may not be uh, complied in total, but there are good reasons why you are demanding, why the EMT was demanded. So it can always be reviewed by the government of the talks. <clears throat> and not exactly like that, but something of that nature can always be worked out. It can be trashed out at the government level. I would say very bluntly that the MHA, the Government of India and ENTO had been conferring themselves without the state for too long. Had they involved the state right from the beginning, I, I don't see any reason why it should have taken so much time. Either. You see, we should not see the state becoming a part of the talks as an interference, nor an obstacle. The state has just come in, into the table, into the room, and joined the discussions. So if there were delays, the state has no hand in it, and uh, the state will never stand in the way of any arrangement being implemented. But ultimately, it's a part, you know, the geopolitical jurisdiction falls within the state government, the state of Nara. So when a portion of the state is being touched, is being carved out or demarcated and given some other status than the present arrangement we have, naturally, it's only so natural that the people concerned will have to come back to the state. That is, that is the only reason that we are being involved. So what we, what we are saying now is uh, whatever has transpired between them, maybe the EMPO have, uh, have sought too much from the government of India or the government of India had encouraged and given too much false hope to the people. Now, who is to blame between them? We are trying to play the neutralizing role. We are trying to give that healing touch only and asking both sides to climb down a little bit. Mm -hmm. they, they're asking them to uh, take a look again at the surroundings, at the realities hmm? and what is possible on the ground and not to have too lofty of the programs, either of them, into our eastern areas. Some defects were there. I think uh, uh, many did not reach the places or the purposes for which it was intended to never be implemented, unfortunately. So we have to study this carefully and plug the new holes. It's sort of it is not repeated in the future. But to make up for all those lost time, lost grounds, uh, what we, what the state government would like to propose to the government of India is that an economic package be given 
for our eastern areas so that the march or the double speed up to catch up with the rest of the state. Because we see this more as an economic problem than other things. We are all still one. PMPO leaders have expressed time and again that we are not going anywhere from Nagas. We are very much Nagas. We are very much a part of this state. We will remain under 371. Huh? Well, yes, we have fought together for this state. The tribal organizations of Jang, uh, Hom was there, Konyak was there, uh, Yinchumur was there. I mean, all our Eastern tribal leaders were there when the tribal leaders formed the Naga People's Convention and signed the 16 points agreement. You see, the tribal representative. So, this is something we're all going to ask for together. So, we see no reason why we should bifurcate and split up any of that. Well, let us let good sense prevail. It is ours. Mm -hmm. This whole state belongs to, uh, to us, together. We are all stakeholders. It is theirs as much as it is mine. Yeah? That sense of ownership we should not lose. Why punish our own state goal? Why not punish our own people? Why isolate ourselves? Why start sulking? No one is against anybody's aspiration for something else also. It will be done with understanding. So I request that uh, the legislators from the eastern area, they have said that they will participate. Hmm? Earlier, because of our putting, putting unfortunate putting issue, they did not participate. Then we all understand. But this time, they have said they will participate. So they must participate. This, this is not only for the rest of Nagas. It includes our eastern sides also. And whatever negotiation, dialogue, discussion is there, continue. It's all right. Where is the misunderstanding? Who has ever raised any objection that ENPO should not confer directly with the government of India? Nobody. So it's all right. We'll settle. Like how we have settled this most contentious <laughs> issue here just today. What is not resolved among us now? We will not take our issues to the street. 